So I'd like to summarize the examples that we've seen. Example 1 and example 2 are kind of similar. In example 1, we started with a trig function on the outside and the corresponding inverse trig function on the inside. And so the question in that case is whether or not this is a valid ratio. If it is, then that is just what the answer should be. And if it's not, then there just is no answer. The, the expression is undefined. It doesn't make sense. For problem two, we have the inverse trig function on the outside and the matching trig function on the inside. So the question is whether or not this angle is part of the restricted set of angles that can come out of that inverse trig function. If it is, then that's what the answer is. If not, we have to find the angle that does correspond to that. And so we saw that this was 3 pi over 4 because 5 pi over 4 is outside of that range of valid angles of, of uh, the restricted set. For problems 3 and 4, the trig function and the inverse trig function, they didn't match. But we started inside here, we started with a ratio. The inverse trunk trig function was the one inside, so this is a ratio, one half. This is a ratio, and so we can build a reference triangle and then figure out what the other ratio should be, what the tangent ratio and the secant ratio should be. In problem five, we were able to use a cofunction identity to simplify the expression and, and make the trig functions match, the inverse trig function and the trig function inside. We could try to work with this angle and figure out what the ratio would be and then figure out the angle that has that cosine ratio, but that's kind of a big mess. So the, the cofunction identity was, was pretty helpful. And finally, the last expression involved an angle sum inside the sine function. And so using the angle sum identity for sine, uh, we were able to simplify that expression. I encourage you to take a few minutes to work on these questions. They're similar to the problems that we saw in the video. We want to try to evaluate each of these function pairs involving an inverse trig function and a trig function. Let me point out my penmanship was a little bad here. This is a B, so this is tangent of cosecant inverse of B over 2. In a separate video, I'll mention the answers to these. I might not work through all of them in detail, but I'll uh, comment at least a little bit on some and mention the answers for all of them. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.